Kind of deep it in. Get all of that beautiful sauce on it. Nice. Mm. Your fingers. Mm. I love butter chicken, guys. It's so good. Mm. We are at the Trafalgar Square, a very well-known tourist attraction right smack in the middle of London. This square is built to commemorate the victory of Admiral Nelson in his battle in Trafalgar in 1805, where he led the British Navy to victory over the Spanish and the French. It is also unfortunate that in this battle, he lost his life. And right in front of me is the column of Nelson. You can see it's quite a huge, magnificent monument with Admiral Nelson right on top, left hand on his sword, and I believe his right arm is missing. So it's just the sleeve hanging over his body and underneath the column are four statues of lions. If I understood correctly, they are there to protect the Nelson's column as well as to showcase the heroism of Emeril Nelson. And on both sides are fountains which are built in later on together with statues of tritons, dolphins and mermaids. On the four corners are plinths with natural heroes of Britain and on the fourth plinth is where it gets interesting. It's actually meant for contemporary art to be showcased on the fourth plinth and right now we have got I'm sorry I didn't read it, it's basically a statue of two men one is a life-size one, one is an enlarged one <laughs> and behind me, right here that is the National Gallery which is a museum that showcases many historical art pieces masterpieces by artists such as Leonardo, Michelangelo, Raphael and even Van Gogh's sunflowers I'm sorry, those are the only four artists that I know Anyway, I know it's not the best day to showcase Trafalgar because it's raining, you can tell with my umbrella and probably a little bit of uh, raindrops on the lens but today, I'm super excited because we're going to eat something warming something with lots of spices we're having some Indian cuisine at a one Michelin restaurant called Gymkhana I think they specialize in Northern Indian cuisine So, let's go! Little by little, piece by piece I take back what's been stolen from me Little by little, piece by piece Until I'm complete Alright guys, see there at the restaurant, the first thing that comes to mind is very classic setup. For other dim lights, there's music playing in the background, hopefully not too loud. And we are luckily seated right next to the window. So we've got a little bit more light coming in. Now, upstairs looks pretty suitable for lunch. There are people sitting in booths. And downstairs is where it gets really interesting. It looks really lavish. I mean, looking at it from the outside, you wouldn't expect it to look this lavish. Especially downstairs. You've got even a private dining room surrounded by mirrors. And it looks really, really nice. Now, they've got quite a few menus. There's the a la carte menu. And they have this tasting menu over here, uh, which is 95 pounds. And they've got a lunch tasting menu for 42 pounds. Due to time restriction, you can only dine for one and a half hours. And Jim Kana, which is a plumber really. We will have to go for a la carte because I want to try out a few of their stuff. So probably three, four dishes if we can make it in time. Now before we begin, I gotta come clean. My knowledge in terms of Indian cuisine is pretty limited, but my exposure I would say is pretty decent considering I'm a Malaysian. And I've tried quite a few pretty good Indian restaurants back in our country. Anyway, I'll do my best. Alright, the appetizer is here guys. This is the Kid Goat Matikima. A spicy curry with fenugreek leaves and baby goat. And up top we've got some shali that is like fried potato straws. And on the side we've got some bread which is called pao. But this is an Indian pao made with maida, an Indian refined wheat flour. So the way to eat this as recommended by the chef is to drizzle lemon on top, pour in the onion, mix it together nicely and then you slot it into that bread. Sort of like a slider if I may. Mm. Mm. 
the very very good it's soft light it chewy and there's this crusty surface on the inside because i think they toasted it and they buttered it the flavor of the meti kima is spicy moderately spicy i would say you could taste the meaty flavor that would be the glue and you could taste all the onionness of the onions it's like a like a minced minced spicy goat meat with onions in it it's savory it's pretty good gotta put on a little bit more Mm. I love the bread. The bread is done really, really well. Yep, it's a good appetizer. Let's go on to the main course. <laughs> Alright, guys, the first main course, and I got my beloved fatted chicken masala. It's a North Indian dish consisting of chicken, yogurt, spices, tomato, butter, maybe some cream. And to eat this, I'm gonna get a vehicle, which is beautiful naan. Over here we've got two types of naan, the garlic naan and behind it's a seeded naan. We also have two condiments to go with the naan. One is a dao and one is a spinach with corn. So without further ado, I'm going to try the garlic naan on its own first because I absolutely love naan. The great naan should be fluffy, a little bit of chew, sort of like a pizza dough. And I'm expecting the fragrance of the garlic. Right. It's got a nice crisp base. And the top is a little bit chewy, fluffy, and I love that fragrance of the garlic, that the pungency of the garlic. It's not too strong, it's just nice. Let's see these toasted spots here. That's where the flavor is at. Mm. What could be lacking is what I call the, the dough fragrance. You know, when you, when, you, when you put something in a tandoor and then you, it fluffs up and then. The really good ones have this fragrance, which I think seems to be missing from this particular piece of lamb. Some they're still pretty good. Alright, I'm gonna try that down. I'm gonna mix it up nicely. And then we're gonna dip the garlic and onion. Mm. It's creamy. It's a creamy down. You can still taste the lentil beans, some of them are still in there, nice texture and it lends that sort of like a throaty spiciness, it's pretty good. I like the consistency of the dal. Mmm, the cream. Let's try the spinach. Mmm. Spinach is interesting, it's salty. Green flavour of the spinach. It feels a little bit astringent, but it does lend the sort of shall I call it a grass flavor to the nut. It's pretty decent too. Mmm, look at that. So creamy looking. Okay, I'm gonna mix it up. Yeah, I wanna just try a bit of the sauce first. Mmm. Mmm. It's sweet. It's savory, it's creamy, it's really pretty good. You could still taste the base of tomato and the butter. Mm. Okay, let's try the chicken now. Mm. I think it's a piece of chicken breast, super tender, and it falls apart. It's still got a bit of bitiness to it. The chicken is good. Okay, I'm gonna grab this nun to try with it. Oh, oh, there's more behind. I think this is not a nun. It's a. I think it's called like a pudina bread. It's a roti basically. This is mint leaves. This is onion seeds. So let's go. Kind of deep it in. Get all of that beautiful sauce on. Nice. Mm. I love butter chicken guys. It's so good. It pairs really well with none that is less flavored. There's a garlic we have been too pungent for this. This is a delicate flavor. You want a nice toasty nun. This is good.
So it's covered with the lovely puff pastry, so I'll just break the cow for you. So with the lovely pomegranate and mint right there. Hey okay guys, the biryani is here. Look at this. It's a wild manjak biryani. Manjak is basically a kind of deer that is native to South Asia and Southeast Asia. And I could smell all that fragrance, the spices. Oh, this is gonna be so good. And it came with a puff pastry up top. It comes with all sorts of seeds. It's really interesting. And it also comes with a beautiful sort of a small little pot of pomegranate and mint raita. Look at this color, it's so nice. Alright, the way I do biryani is before we eat the biryani, because now it's piping hot, we're gonna let it sit for about 5, maybe 10 minutes. Let it cool down a bit, and then we taste it so that the flavor can present themselves beautifully. Okay, while we're waiting, I'm gonna help speed up the process of letting it cool off. Let the steam escape a bit. I'm gonna mix the rice about, look at all the beautiful individual grains of rice and that meat, the manjak meat. Okay, to cool it down further, I'm gonna remove some of the rice, put it onto the plate. Nicely done. Some meat. A bit more of the rice. Okay, I think we're ready to try this. Let's go. Mm. Basmati rice. Beautifully green, it's got a nice bite to it. The caramelized onions, sweet with that toastiness and the amount of spice behind you can taste all the spices. They don't stand out, you can't tell like each individual spice, but it forms a complex flavor behind the rice. Mm. Let's try a bit of the raita. Raita is a type of yogurt by the way, and in this case is enhanced by pomegranate and mint. Oh! This is very brilliantly done. Imagine a yogurt that cuts down on the spices of the rice, and you get a pop of pomegranate. Oh, this is nice. This is nice. Mm. Okay. Some good biryani. Definitely one of the better ones I've had in a long time. Let's try the manja. It's so tender. Mm. It's got its own umami as well. It's a good piece of meat, definitely. Mm. Mm. This is toasty, all the seed flavors. It's fragrant. Yep. Okay, guys, originally I wanted to get a dessert after this. I'll be honest, we are pretty filled. <laughs> really, really full. So I guess that will be it. We're gonna finish this up and we'll see you in a bit for plating time. Hey guys, we're at this market called Seven Downs Market and we're having some masala chai mm. while Kuat is wearing an apron. It's a new way to carry a bag. Yeah, it's not an apron, it's a bag. Anyway, let's talk about Gymkhana. Before we begin, because we did not try the tasting menu from Gymkhana, all our assessment is going to be based upon the few a la carte items that we have tried. Let's go dish by dish. The first dish, Kid Goat Mati Kima. I must say the dish was executed really well, especially the pao. It's soft and we are nice toasty inside. It's got a nice crispy butteriness within and the Mati Kima is done quite well. It does lean rather salty though. Moderately spicy, rather salty, savoury, meaty. One thing I want to note is probably they gave us too much Mati Kima relative to the bread because it's only two pieces of rather small pieces of bread. And when you finish it, you're left with something that is rather salty. I think it might be better if they reduce the amount of the curry and maybe charge us a little bit less. Since it's a starter, you know, uh, you don't increase the bread, like it might be too much. Yeah. Anyway, second dish, the butter chicken. I really like the butter chicken. It's done really, really well. It's got a lot of spices within. It's buttery, it's creamy, it's fragrant. Chicken pieces are tender, even the chicken breast. That is done very well. 
and the acidity of the tomato as a base, I think that's done beautifully. And the naan as well, the garlic naan, it's got a nice garlic pungent flavour. The onion sin naan has that important dough fragrance of a naan. I think that is done very well. I will strongly suggest you eat it on its own. Don't put any of the condiments on, don't put the butter chicken on. Eat it on its own, it's very tasty and very fragrant. And the last one is a putina red flour. Bread basically, a putina yeah. bread. I think that also has its own distinct flavour of the flour. And it goes well with the condiments. The condiments are done relatively well as well, you know. The spinach as well as the dal. That being said, is it the best butter chicken we have had? No. Mm. So, we have a version that is uh, that is a lot more refined. Mm. It's called Flower, a restaurant back in our home country in Malaysia. During COVID, they did this home cooking delivery where they had their butter chicken. The spices are more pronounced. It has yep. more depth and it's not as salty. Mm. I think Jim Kana's version is more salt heavy. Hence, the spices do struggle a little bit to present themselves better. You could taste them. It's just, you know, it would be better if it has more depth. Yeah. Anyway, next dish, the biryani. Mm. Again, very well executed biryani. Definitely one of the best biryanis we have had. Light, fluffy basmati mm. rice, individually grained. The spices create that complex flavor behind the rice. And the fried onions give you that nice fragrance along with that toastiness. And I might be really mistaken, but I think I tasted some form of raisin. There's a sweetness. Although it's very scarce, it's like every three, four mouths, you probably get one small bit of it. But that's a nice touch. That being said, I do think that the biryani also lacks uh, depth. Mm. I mean, it has very good depth, but... The punch is not enough. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not punchy enough. I yeah. hate to draw comparison, but that's the only way I can say it, is that there's this restaurant in our whole country called Nadodi. They create a really good biryani. Basically, it's the same flavours, but it has more depth. You could taste the spices better. It's like it's more infused into the rice, in a way. Gymkhana's one is good, but it's not punching enough. Probably if they increase the depth of the flavours a little bit more, you have given it a better dimension. That's it. The raita was done phenomenally. Yep. I love the raita. Yes. It's creamy, yogurty, and the use of pomegranate is brilliant. So, taking all of this into consideration, we would say that Gymkhana scores a half a plate mm. on the gourmet plate, which means it is some high quality and rather authentic Indian cuisine right there. I think if you're in London and you're craving Indian food or you want to try authentic Indian food, definitely, yeah, try out Gymkhana. I think it is really authentic and it's really, really good as well. In fact, I would suggest that you go for the tasting menu for lunch because I think it's only £42 and you do get 5 courses inclusive of desserts. However, because we had a restriction of 1.5 hours and we are filming and I wanted to try the biryani and the butter chicken which is not available in the tasting menu, we chose the a la carte. Mm. Yep. So I guess that's it for the food vlog for the day. Hope you have enjoyed this food vlog. If you did, do consider giving us a thumbs up. If you yet to subscribe, do consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell button. Till we meet again next week in London. Yep. Bye bye. bye.